All right, hey guys. So today we thought we would talk about the first function and third function loops. I think this is something that is kind of common in MBTI theory. Right, yeah, I guess the theory is that you're supposed to have a, like a nice balance of introverted and extroverted energy via your first two functions, but then like usually <laughs> introverts are just much better at using their introverted functions and vice versa, so they might get stuck in like alternating between their first and third. First, we're going to talk about all the feeling types, and then we'll do another video on all the thinking types. So, ISFJ. So I feel like ISFJs with SI and TI might get stuck in analyzing the past as if they can figure out what really happened in the past, then they'll be able to move on with their life. Like, oh, this breakup happened, and if only if I can use TI to figure out exactly what went wrong, then I can start a new relationship or something like that. And feeling like they have to have all the answers about analyzing the past and figuring it out before moving forwards. So I feel like they should then use FE and NE to connect with others and explore new ways of relating to people. And in that process, they will probably find the answers that they're looking for instead of just in their own head trying to figure out what went wrong without input from other people. It seems like they're very rooted in this like theory almost. Yeah, like mm -hmm. they can get lost in this spiral of almost research like scholarly theory about everything in life. Yeah, like without right. just enjoying it or something. Yeah, I mean, there's that stereotype of like ISFJs getting stuck in these like routines and societal movements yeah like just traditionalism and i know some people like break out of it but maybe it's siti loop of how everything should be done and how everything was done in the past i think isfjs tend to follow norms and also what they did in the past i mean i count that as tradition as well continuing to do what they did in the past that worked when I say that, it just sounds so obvious. Like, oh, I did this thing in the past, it worked. Like, obviously everyone would keep doing that, but then I don't do it. Like, it's just mind-boggling sometimes. Like, oh, I found this way of editing videos. It's pretty efficient. It works. No, I like, after like a week, I get sick of it and I do this new way. It might be right. like way less efficient, but it just can't keep doing Like, that's something I right. need to work on. Like, sometimes it's good to stick to something that works. Do you think we can use the word like preferences? that might be better than tradition. Because I feel like that's like one of the big things about like censors that like make people not want to think that they're censors because they're like, no, I'm not traditional. I don't know why traditional is such a bad thing nowadays. I think the word traditional is tied to all these like actual tangible things, but in my mind, it's just more like following a trend that they themselves might have established. Or consistent, that's the word I was looking for, consistent. Okay. So consistent with the past. Yeah, are consistent with their own preferences. See, that's so funny because I keep thinking, maybe because I have like SIFI and you have like NIFI, so you think of NI as the past, as in like the past of the history of the universe, but then I think of the past as my past. So I keep mm. thinking consistent with the past as consistent with their preferences by default, by what they did right. in the past, but then you think of it as consistent in the past of like humanity. That's right. really interesting that like that yeah, or that SI and I difference. ESFJ. The FE any loop will manifest by trying to accommodate anyone, everyone by coming up with multiple ways to do so and just eventually wearing yourself out by spreading yourself too thin by like trying to accommodate every single person and using NE to somehow figure out a way to accommodate oh, yeah, every single so person accurate. even if they want different things. Yeah. <laughs> so accurate to real life. Oh god. So I feel like they have to use S-I-T-I to remember specific instances when it logically became too much for them and then learn to draw the line there and, and kind of assert boundaries. Both ESFJs, I know they like, bless their hearts, no, they like lend copious amounts of money to people mm. and it just didn't work out but then they both did it again and it still didn't work out and then, yeah the whole any like i see possible way of making any relationship work that is so accurate mm. that's it yeah and also <laughs> with like my with my esfj mom i feel like she does that too and I, sometimes i'm just like it's okay mom like you know you're trying to anticipate everyone's needs before they even like told you that they might want it. Like it's like her Effie's like, oh okay, I have to be good to these people, and her NE is like, okay, let me think about every possible thing they could possibly want and make sure that that's all accommodated for. And I'm mm. like, but you don't even know that they want those things. Yeah, like sometimes <laughs> this relationship is going like there's so many things about this relationship that's going badly, but then they still 
think of like that one possible thing and I relate because I know like my any can think of anything as being possible but then still right. like you know usually F-I-S-I just well now <laughs> stop that but uh, I don't know their F-E is like must accommodate this one possibility it's like no remember that S-I <laughs> instance when it didn't work follow that with your T-I <laughs> yeah you, yeah INFJ so I feel like for INFJs they will see only one future route that makes logical sense to them. And believing kind of far out theories just because their TI could figure out a way that it could possibly be true. So to get out of this, they could use FE and SE to see what is presently of external value that is also value to them and that's worthwhile pursuing. So not getting so much stuck in what is internally logical, but just seeking something that holds real meaning to them that can be done externally that could maybe help others. I know like a few INFJs that they're so mysterious that I cannot think of it an example. It's like maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's like their NITI loop is so strong that it's impenetrable and no one can understand. Yeah, I think there is some truth to that. But I feel like okay, ENFJ, I feel like I know what all ENFJs want. Like ENFJ will not keep what they want secret. Like you will just know it. You will know what they want for themselves. You will know what they want for you. You will know what they want for society. But for INFJs, it's like, ooh. That's true. I feel like sometimes, oh, here's the thing. Oh my gosh, the whole like door slam thing, which INFJs are so rare. So I know it from you guys, <laughs> you viewers and commenters uh, who are explaining to me about the door slam thing. It's like, oh, once I realize that there's no possible way for this relationship to work, then that's when I pull the cord. It's like, yeah, but did you communicate? That. like so I feel like maybe the SEFE is the communication part that the ENFJ does but TI is like oh this is the right thing to do like people should be doing this all is encompassing this should be happening and then they don't like say it and then suddenly you're out right. of their life forever like they try to analyze everything in their own heads instead of using FESE just to like check in with the mm -hmm. other person to see if their thoughts about them or their thoughts about the relationship are actually <laughs> true to the other person just a theory because yeah it's based on the comments that i don't know many infjs because they're so rare so for enfj so i feel like enfjs will try to accommodate everyone by responding to them in the moment and being too available to everyone or sort of like too on call for everyone so their fe wants to accommodate everyone and then their se might just like drop everything and go and help that person right then and there I feel like they should use NITI to determine like holistic principles of where to draw the line so that ENFJs are still giving to others, which I think is probably an important part of their psyche, but also valuing like yourself in your own time. Okay, I feel like I don't know enough ENFJs, so this is another like intuitive guess. I presume that ENFJs would be very emotionally reactive in the moment. Like, yeah, like, when I was doing that interview with Megan Lavota, it's just, like, she sees someone in the... <laughs> she sees the INFP in the potato line. She's like, what? She said that um, INFP will be in line and complaining about how the line is long. And then she's like, hello, I'm also in the line. The line is long for everyone. I'm like, but, but what does my feelings have to do with everyone else, though? Like, what is this? Right, okay, I think with the ENFJs, yeah, they might maybe try to inspire other people, but just through like what they see of them in like a singular SE moment. So, but this is, yeah, of course, just like when they're in an FE SE loop, like they might just like, yeah, see these SE things and then make it a lot bigger of a problem than it actually is and then try to use their FE to try to help them and inspire them. Um, if they tapped back into their NI and TI, they might see that like, okay, maybe this was just an exception for this person. I can see what you see with emotional reactivity and I actually feel like there was an ENFJ who kind of did that, who would like see one instance and then be like, Alex, no, you have to do this, you have to do that. I think they're so good at it too, like way better than ESFJs in terms of emotional affect, like, because ESFJs are kind of bubbly and stuff, but like with the FESE, like, I don't know, they're so freaking intense, they're like staring yeah. into your eyes, I'm, like they're saying things that sound like a sermon from God, it's like, oh, yeah. Moving on to ISFE. FI and I loop might be that they find personal meaning or fulfillment in a future that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, oh wow, that's so kind of, Or maybe they will believe 
kind of weak NI trends that are meaningful to them, even if they might not be like externally validated. So again, they could use SE and TE to actually observe what is really taking place, and be able to kind of capitalize on opportunities with SE and use TE to actually implement ways that you want fulfillment in that grand NI future. <laughs> ISFP, I know, is like just, but this is kind of good. Like, I don't know, she's like making art and it's basically like she already made it. It's just that she has an issue. Not really like, quite there yet in terms of like financial, but it might as well have happened in her mind, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like that FI and I, like, yes, this is, I'm an artist, this is like how life is. Okay, so for ESFPs, for ESFPs, I feel like they will get stuck in seeing opportunities and acting immediately on them in a TE manner, but then feeling lost in too many possible courses of action. Yeah, not really knowing which way to go. So I feel like they should you then tap back into their FI and NI to decide which ones they value and probably more importantly which ones again have like that long term potential to actually give you that FI desire of yours. <laughs> okay, this is so good. I actually didn't like, ah, oh, I'm so happy I know like an ESFP perfect example. You know, opportunistic via SCNTE. He just like, I don't know, he must have saw a bar for sale and he bought it. And it was kind of going bankrupt because like, I don't know, he just wasn't very good at like the, the NI long-term thing. He's very reactive. Any little thing that happened in the bar, he would just react without thinking about the long-term NI consequences. But also, like, the FI wasn't very activated either in this case. <laughs> Thanks to Lou. Because, like, this guy, he is, like, a family guy. He doesn't even drink. Like, he barely drinks and he decides to buy a bar. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, and then the bar has, like, a, it's a music venue too, but he does like, he doesn't even really listen to, like, the type of music that would be played at this bar. And, uh, yeah, so when the music musicians come, he would be like, goes to the basement, plug his ears, and like, why did you, like, do this? Yeah, it's like such a TE or SETE thing. Yeah, very right. similar to the ENTJ loop, too. INFP, yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I feel like the INFP's FI SI loop would maybe only find personal meaning or fulfillment in past situations. So they might kind of like look back to certain past situations and like think of that as like some sort of ideal and be like, oh. If I could go back to that, that might like fulfill me. I guess they could use NE and TE to imagine all the possible ways in which you could feel like that presently and then actually do TE to like try to implement some of those things. I think that's more like ISTJ, which by the way, I also relate to as discussed before. So it's kind of like INFP being opposite of ESTJ, like instead of just branching out and actually doing some things in the world with NE and TE, we are like very thinking this only one thing is valuable and it's a very specific thing. But mm. so here it's kind of overlapping with yours. It might be some sort of ideal that we had when we were very young. Like, oh, I can just have this like one profession <laughs> or like two professions and it's just only those. And it might be like so specific that we miss out on other opportunities because like, okay, if I want to be like a film director or whatever, and there's tangential things that I can do to become closer to that, I might like reject all these other things to do that's related because I think, oh no, <laughs> not good enough for my like SI, SI. The other thing is like morally scrutinizing yourself in a very black and white item by item mm. manner via SI. Usually about the past, like I might have done something that hurt someone. I will like just replay this over and over again in my mind and just think of like exactly like what little things I did and how one word could have changed things or not changed things. Mm. And obviously you can use any to break out of that by thinking about the future and actually going outside. <laughs> Go out towards me, do stuff. ENFP. For ENFP, I feel it's like imagining many potential futures for themselves and trying to do them all at once via TE and thus kind of like spreading themselves too thin and not really fully committing to like any one path or any one project. They could use FI and SI to determine which ones have the most value to you with FI and also which ones kind of make the most sense based on like your past knowledge of yourself via SI. Yeah, that's so funny because, okay, this one ENFP I know, I know this is not representative of all ENFPs, but the spirit is there. I think she wanted to be like, <laughs> she wanted to be monogamous and poly at the same time. 
No, it's just like the same thing with jobs and futures. It's just like nothing is contradictory. All is possible. I will do all the things. And it's like, no, you can't do all the things. Like, what's important? What did you prefer based on what you did in the past? Yeah, that's all. That's my example. Yeah, and I knew in ENFP too, one minute he'd be like, oh, I could see myself being like this profession. And then the next day he'd be like, oh, I could really see myself being this profession. Yep. <laughs> and there were like 10 different professions that he could like see himself being with See, MD that's and... so similar to the ESCJ. Even I yeah. said like, oh, the ESCJ was like, oh, I can excel at any job. It's like, okay, which one do you want? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video about the feeling types loops. Tell us if you relate. If you enjoy our videos, please pledge your support to us on Patreon. It is really helpful. We really appreciate our current patrons. Please, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys okay. so much for all your current support. And yeah, we'll see you next time with the thinkers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bye!